Secrets of the Moon Landing Hey everyone, it's Alexa and welcome back to another video. It's been 50 years since man landed on the moon for the first time. It was an iconic day on the 16th of July 1969 and roughly 650 million people tuned in to watch around the world. Many facets of the mission have escaped the public eye or have just been forgotten over the decades. Here are some facts about the moon landing that you may not know about. But before we get into today's video, make sure that you're subscribed and ring the bell so that you never miss any of our upcoming videos. Fly Me to the Moon there were two possible outcomes for the Apollo 11. A, a successful landing that would go down in history, or B, a very unsuccessful landing that would go down in history. Thankfully, option A was the result, but there was a plan of action in place if the result was option B. If the moon landing was a failure, Richard Nixon's speechwriter already had a speech in place for Nixon to deliver. The poetic phrase was as follows, fate has ordained that men who went to the moon to explore in peace will stay on the moon to rest in peace. Sign on the dotted line. If you were working for a life insurance company, the chances of you having given life insurance to Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Michael Collins would have been slim to none. Chances of them returning in one piece were not high. The guys decided to sign hundreds of envelopes with their signatures because they knew their fame would have fetched high price tags for those autographs. The postmarked envelopes were called covers and were given to close friends and family. The sale of those envelopes would have taken care of the families for life many moons ago. It might have been a completely different story if Neil Armstrong hadn't survived his training before the Apollo 11 mission. He was undergoing a simulated lunar module landing while training as the backup commander of Apollo 11 when he lost control of the vehicle at 200 feet in the air. He ejected himself and the vehicle plummeted to the ground, crashing and burning on impact. A few nail-biting seconds later, Armstrong floated to the ground. Armstrong said that Earth landings were far more challenging than moon landings, as on Earth there is wind, turbulence, and other factors that are just not present on the moon. Dust to dust. The astronauts that landed on the moon were quite surprised to realize that lunar dust had a pungent odor. The astronauts didn't pick up on the odor while on the moon and could only smell it when they were back inside the spacecraft. Guess it makes sense, as the moon dust is around 4 billion years old and has never had contact with oxygen before. Armstrong described the smell as gunpowder. It's still a mystery as to why it smells like gunpowder because there are no similar compounds between the two. Mark my words. One of the most famous quotes in history is, one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Armstrong was meant to say, that's one small step for a man. There's still debate as to whether he got stage fright and dropped the A, or if there was a dodgy connection, which meant we couldn't hear him say A. Leave it to the experts. The spacesuits worn by the astronauts were made by an all-female team who were bra experts. Armstrong's suit cost roughly $100,000 at the time. International Latex Corporation won the contract to make the spacesuits, and the seamstresses had to be 100% precise. There was no room for error. The suits were made up of 21 layers of fabric, and even the slightest glitch would have the suit tossed out, and the process would start again. Over the Moon it wasn't just women that were involved in the making of the spacesuits, but several women were also involved in the successful landing of Apollo 11. Katherine Johnson was one of the few African-American women who was employed to ensure all the calculations at the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics were correct. Katherine Johnson was one of the people responsible for writing the calculations for Apollo 11's trajectory to the moon. She was also responsible for several other launches, and her life story was made into a film called Hidden Figures. Space Oddity Thinking of everything the three astronauts had to remember on their mission, remembering to not shut the door fully behind them would seem like the least important thing. Except, if they forgot that, they might not have been able to re-enter the spaceship after stepping onto the moon. The instruction was to not fully close the door of the landing module. A Lasting Impression we mentioned the iconic first words spoken by Armstrong a little earlier on, but those were not the first words to be uttered on the moon. Seems like Aldrin was the first to speak on the moon, but his words were certainly not memorable. He said, Okay, engines stop. A promise kept. Neil Armstrong's grandmother was so panicked about the thought of her grandson heading out onto the moon that she made him promise that he wouldn't set foot on the moon if he felt it was dangerous. Thankfully, the moon didn't look dangerous, and Armstrong could step out without breaking his promise to his grandma. Walking on the moon. Special effort was made for the Apollo 11 mission to have an American flag that could fly while on the airless moon. The flag was designed by Jack Kinsler, who was the Technical Services Division Chief, and David McCraw, the Deputy Division Chief. 
McCross stitched the hem onto the top of the flag and installed an aluminum rod to hold the flag out to the side. When you're good, you're good. Neil Armstrong was an excellent pilot. In fact, perhaps too good. When he landed on the moon, he was meant to land with quite a thud. This would ensure the legs underneath the rocket would crumble and the guys could climb out near the surface of the moon. Armstrong landed so gently that the legs didn't break and they had to make a giant leap out of the craft and plant their feet onto the moon. Process this. The Apollo Guidance Computer, or AGC, was a computer that played an important role in the moon landing. It provided guidance, navigation, and control. This was a state-of-the-art device from the 1960s, but today would be less powerful than a calculator. The computer weighed over 30 kilograms, or 66 pounds, and had less RAM than calculators of today. The archaic equipment didn't glitch once during the space mission. Rock on. While on the moon, the crew gathered rocks and soil to bring back to Earth. Amongst their findings, they found three minerals, armalcolite, tranquilityite, and pyroxferroite. Interesting to note, armalcolite was later found on Earth. Keep the peace. With the moon landing being a global event, NASA asked the astronauts to refrain from any religious or political talk before and during the mission. Buzz Aldrin didn't quite follow the request, and when they had landed on the moon, decided it was the perfect opportunity to reflect on his own personal beliefs. He radioed back to Earth and gave thanks for the great opportunity and drank a small bit of wine and ate a piece of bread while reading from his Bible. He is the only person to have taken communion on the moon. A Mother's Worry it must have been the most stressful time of the astronauts' mothers' lives, knowing that their children might not come back home. Of all the concerns, Neil Armstrong's mother's concern was that the lunar crust wouldn't support the weight of her son and that he would fall right through. Left Behind Footsteps were not the only thing that astronauts left behind. They also left some souvenirs on the moon. They left a tiny silicon disk with messages of peace from 73 leaders around the globe. The Queen's message read, On behalf of the British people, I salute the skill and courage which have brought man to the moon. May this endeavor increase the knowledge and well-being of mankind. They also left a replica of an olive branch and a plaque saying, Here, men from the planet Earth first set foot upon the moon. July 1969 AD. We came in peace and for all mankind. Fill her up. By the time the team had landed on the moon, there were only 60 seconds of fuel left. If they had taken any longer to make their descent, they would have had to abort the mission. Quick fix. After the guys had gathered their moon samples to bring back to Earth, they returned to the lunar module. They must have been a bit taken aback to realize that a switch on a circuit breaker had broken and they could not ignite the engine. While NASA was frantically trying to fix the problem from Earth, the team caught a few Zs. When it still wasn't fixed upon waking, Armstrong took matters into his own hands and jammed a pen into the mechanism, and his quick fix worked. They were soon back in the air thanks to a simple felt tip pen. Anything to declare? When Armstrong, Aldrin, and Collins arrived in Honolulu, they jokingly filled out the customs and immigration form. Under the section items to declare, they wrote moon rock and moon dust samples. When questioned if they had any conditions on board that might spread disease, they replied, to be determined. Keep it contained. Scientists were concerned that there would be contamination on Earth with lunar pathogens, so the team had to be kept quarantined for three weeks. The mobile quarantine facility was 35 feet long and was designed by Melpar Incorporated. It had places to sleep, eat, and bathroom facilities. They could also communicate with anyone outside until it was time for them to come out. With time, they realized that there were no living organisms on the moon, so this practice was discontinued after Apollo 14. I'm a celeb. When the guys returned to Earth, they went on a global goodwill tour and visited 27 cities in 24 countries over 45 days. They stopped in places like New York City, Japan, Mexico, Iran, Pakistan, and even the Congo. They got to meet many celebrities, royalty, and even the Pope. If you were given the opportunity, would you travel to the moon? Let us know in the comments below. One, in memory of. The moon landing is a date that will never be forgotten. To celebrate its 50th anniversary, the Smithsonian's National Air and Space Museum, in partnership with the U.S. Department of the Interior and 59 Productions, hosted a full-sized projection 
on the side of the Washington Monument of the Saturn V rocket that shot Apollo 11 into orbit all those years ago. 